I grew up in the northeast. Um, my parents were both teachers at my local comprehensive, uh, which is where I went. And um, one shouldn't underestimate the horror as a teenager of being taught by your dad. <laughs> In retrospect, it was a great thing to do. It was, it was totally out of my comfort zone, um, largely because I had no maths background whatsoever, and I had to quickly try and understand maths. Um, but, you know, just, just in terms of teaching me how to think differently about different subjects, it was great. After law school, I went to Herbert Smith, um, and I trained there and qualified into the what was the corporate finance group in their corporate department. Um, did a couple of years there, interspersed with a very short spell at London Stock Exchange, um, it working in what is now the UKLA, so their listing department, and which now belongs to the FCA. I went back to Herbert Smith, um, got busy helping with the... Um, the listing of the national grid um, and then my former colleague at, at the stock exchange gave me a call and said oh we're looking to improve the quality of our regulation department and my new boss is really keen to meet you do you want to come and talk to him to which I said no 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 well, I'm a lawyer don't be silly I'm not going to be a regulator I mean it was a massive deal for me I was going to be I was always going to be a lawyer um, so moving to the Stock Exchange initially, um, in my head, meant I was stopping being a lawyer and I was going to work in their regulation department and do something completely different. And so the first job I did there was investigating insider dealing. That sounds brilliant, it sounds really, really exciting, which was part of the attraction. After about a year, it was not that exciting anymore because I think once you've done a couple of those investigations, uh, you start to, you know, it's much the same thing each time there's a particular formula. I had to learn a lot really, really quite quickly about how markets operated um, and it was especially interesting because at about the same time we introduced um, electronic trading which we hadn't had um, on London Stock Exchange before so so we were also as a team trying to think about what are the different ways that people could use this electronic trading platform to um, carry out their trades um, what are the things we ought to be looking out for? How do we monitor this? How do we get systems? You know, when I had to, we had to sort of reinvigorate our electronic monitoring system as well. So I was responsible for all of that. I was in the right place at the right time quite often. So, so if I think about how I progressed through the regulatory department, every time I it felt like every time I went on a maternity leave, um, I came back and they said, how do you fancy doing this great job? And it was always something better than I'd been doing before, something more challenging, something different. My boss called me in one day and he said, oh, um, the head of legal's resigned. Do you fancy having a go at doing that job? Um, I, mean, what could I, I couldn't say no to that, could I? What a great opportunity. So I said, yes, I'd love to do that. Um, but you just need to know that I am pregnant and I'll be going on a maternity leave quite soon. So um, it, didn't, it didn't matter, it didn't make any difference. I, so I took the, the legal role. The first thing that I did was, was the listing of the stock exchange, so it's IPO. Um, and as soon as that was all finished, I went off, had my baby. Uh, slightly earlier than anticipated, so I just didn't turn up for work one Monday morning. Um, and then four months later went back and, and have been there ever since. The Stock Exchange was a really different place from the place it is now. 
um, it was in a different building. As I say, we were just changing the way that our markets operated. And it wasn't really an organisation that was subject to any competition. Um, so in that sense, it's totally different, you know, it, and it was largely UK based. Now I'd say I work in an international organisation which has a, a diversity of businesses across the financial services value chain. So we've now got lawyers in Sri Lanka where we've got an, a, an IT business. We've got lawyers in New York because we have US business, France, Italy because we, um, the Italian Borsa is part of our, our business as well and obviously London. I mean, it's just been a fascinating, absolutely brilliant role. Um, I'm constantly challenged. I never do the same thing twice. And I still say that after 20 years, I never do the same thing twice. Um, and the business has changed so dramatically that I've always got difficult things to think about that, that yeah, keep my brain ticking over, keep me interested. I'm not going to pretend it hasn't been hard. It's been really tough at times. Um, I've been lucky enough to have a husband who isn't a lawyer and doesn't have the same uh, work patterns as me. So that's been hugely helpful. I have always had a full-time nanny and despite the fact that my youngest child is 17, I still have a full-time nanny because um, I don't like him coming home to an empty house. I think there have been times when my children were small and, and you know, they'd say, Mummy, why can't you take me to school today? And, and all the other mummies are doing X, Y, Z, why can't you do that? Um, but when my daughter went off to university, she called me up one day. So it's made it all worth it for me. And she said, Mummy, I don't understand. All my friends keep talking about how they just want to get married and have children, but they're here doing really good degrees. They're clearly really bright why wouldn't they want to have a career? And then she said, I was thinking about it and I think it's because they haven't had the same role model as I've had and I want to be just like you. <laughs> it made me so proud. Yeah, I was really pleased.